Hello there, <clears throat> I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. If it's the first time you're visiting my channel, welcome. Subscribe, like and share. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, people who send money back home. When I say back home, that could be back home to Asia, it could be back home to the Caribbean, it could be back home to the Africa, to Africa. And when people are here um, working and they send money back, they just think, okay, I'm sending back money to my people them or, you know, to their family members, to their loved ones. But what we don't realise is that the government of those countries are actually factoring in that money that is sent over into their, econo into their economic um, calculations. They actually depend on that money that you're sending back to your people. And I never knew that. I, I realised the other day when um, I was talking about remittances and, you know, all these people, expats, um, going into the country. And I mentioned something about remittances. And I was wondering whether or not the country pays um, the expatriate countries money. And so when I looked it up, I realised that what it is, is that when most expatriates leave a country, they tend to send back money, whether it's to their own bank accounts, whether it's to family members, whether it's to help in um, disasters. But what I didn't know is that the government actually depends on that money because it helps um, the least developed countries and those who are a bit hard up. So what's been happening now is that because people have been losing jobs and there's been some instability, people have not been in a position to send money as frequently or as much as they used to, and these countries are feeling it. On top of that, some of them were talking about adding tax or, you know, some kind of transfer fee, increasing the transfer fee. Um, because what they're finding now is that people are kind of bypassing the transfer fee and getting money to them, you know, in other means so that they don't have to pay um, those fees. Because when you think about it, it's hard enough sending money to a different country without having to pay an, in, you know, a percentage of it to the middleman. Anyway, um, I'm just going to quickly go through this because I don't want this to be a long a video and I need to get my beauty sleep. And so, yeah, I'm just going to tell you quickly what happens. I mean, this part might be boring for some, but I just wanted to let you know that when you're sending money to your people, that it doesn't just stop there. Yes, they get it, but it forms a part of a bigger picture. Okay, um... Where am I starting? Hmm. Okay, sorry about this. Recently, several high-income countries that are that host that are host to many migrants are considering taxation of outward remittances, in part to raise revenue and in part to discourage undocumented migrants. The list of countries where such taxes are being considered includes Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Saudi Arabia, the United States and the United Arab Emirates. However, taxes on remittances are difficult to administer and likely to drive the flows underground. So what they're basically saying is that when people send money over to these countries now, they're going to try and tax it. I don't think it's in force yet, but just be aware. Uh, various governments want to close down bank accounts of money transfer operators to reduce money laundering and financial crime. Some low-skilled workers pay high recruitment costs to get a job in certain countries where they feel they could earn enough to send back home to their families, but it doesn't work that way. The recruitment costs far outweigh the amount of money they receive. The highest source of foreign exchange, especially in Jamaica, is remittances. So when we um, give them our US dollar, our sterling pound, and that gets exchanged when they take it over, that's how, um, that's the highest source of foreign exchange, apparently. Uh, remittances, remittances are what they call the money 
that you, that foreign workers send back home um, are essential source of financing to many of the third world recipients, which is used to supplement household income for necessities such as food, utilities and education. When an individual sends money to Jamaica or India or for their family, the last thing they're thinking is that an institution is monitoring that income incorporating it into the income figures, making plans based off of that income, and even thinking of how to make money from it. That was my little two pence worth. When people lose their job, it impacts on their ability to send money, which then impacts on the financial well-being of the country they're sending money to. Um, expats' remittances have cushioned poor countries from economic slowdowns, um, what is off-putting is the high transaction costs and the government is actually depending on remittances to keep themselves afloat. Workers are being forced to find informal ways to get money to people they are trying to look after in third world countries because of transaction fees. Visitors to least developed countries are bypassing protocol by exchanging it into local currencies. But recipients don't want local currencies. I know when I go to Jamaica, you know, if I was to give them a whole heap of Jamaican dollars, they wouldn't want it. They want the sterling pound. They want the US dollar. But what happens is when you're doing that, you're actually, um, it's actually being recorded and it actually falls part of um, that wider system. So it is better if they get the Jamaican dollar, even if it's in the same amount. What difference does it make? But I just think they like the, the, the look of the international currency. Um, people who send money home want it to benefit the families directly, but if charges are being inflicted, it is no longer an incentive. It's a vicious circle because the countries who depend on remittances will find them reducing more drastically if they charge extra money. Expats' money shouldn't be financing the middleman, but that's what seems to be happening. Sending money can cost as much as 7% of the amount being sent. Um, Western Union seems to have a no fee for the first three transactions, but that implies that you're going to be sending money regularly to get that free um, for the first three transactions, I would have thought. Um, one solution, said a UN body, is to focus on improving financial services in least developed countries to encourage a bigger proportion of remittances to go into investments, small business development and job creation for increasing urbanised populations. What a bloody cheek, though. I mean, you're sending money to help your people and then they're talking about what they're going to do with it. I don't know how it works, though. I don't know... Um, I don't know if it works in the sense that you give them money and of course those people spend that money and that's extra money coming in that they would the country wouldn't normally have. So when they receive the extra money that's come from outside, they can invest it in something else. That's the only thing I can think of because I guess countries know how much money they have. So if people start spending over that amount, they're going to know it comes from outside. And that's what they're going to use to build up the country. I don't know how it works. I'm not an economist. Um, UNCTAD, the United Nations Conference of Trade and Development, are proposing offering university graduates from the diaspora preferential access to seed capital. It's a bit like Dragon's Den, where um, they want they don't want their people you know like you have people in jamaica you have really qualified people in jamaica in asia and africa and then they leave the country and go to an you know to one of these large western countries and what happens is taking all the brains and the affluence out of the country that they're originally born so what they want to do is do something like dragon's den have some kind of incentive where um, those people with the brains can actually set up a company and what they'll do is they'll give them the um, startup costs in return for um, a cut from, you know, a percentage of the company. So, yeah, problem is people, regardless of academic level, who send money at home don't want to be committed. They send money when they have it or when they feel like it. To try and force them into a formal setup is not going to work.
they're not sending their hard-earned money to help the government, they're sending it to help their families and loved ones. That was just a, like, a little disclaimer I put at the bottom. So, yeah, I just thought, you know, you'd be interested to know that, you know, when you're in your good um, mood and you say, yeah, man, may I send money to my daughter or to my wife or to my auntie or to whoever, um, those remittances are actually what keeps that country afloat. So I think, you know, you might even be glad that you're, you're you know, you are contributing to that economy, you know, of your country. So yeah, it's all good. Okay then, take care now. Bye bye.